Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film, She Had a Dream, playing as part of 11th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Today, we are happy to be talking to the director of the film, Raja Amari, who is joining us from Paris. Hi, Raja. Hi. <laughs> uh, it's nice to see you, even virtually. Thank uh, you. I'm very happy to, to be here with you. <laughs> So uh, you have been directing films since 1998, as far as I know. Uh, your films were screened at film festivals such as Berlin, Venice, Toronto, etc. And your latest film, She Had a Dream, uh, follows 25-year-old Gofrain, a young black woman from Tunisia who dreams of becoming a politician and having an influence on the future of uh, Tunisia as she prepares for the elections in 2019. I would like to start with the protagonist of the film, uh, Gofrain, obviously. Uh, how did you meet her and how did you decide making a film about her uh, journey? Oh, I, I met uh, Gofran. Her name is Gofran through uh, Sadia Mosbah, uh, who is a Tunisian activist. And she's the founder of uh, Nemti Association. Uh, it's an anti-racism association. Uh, and she introduced me to this um, charismatic uh, young Tunisian woman who decided to, uh, to go into politics. And uh, I found this very interesting, um, especially because we were um, uh, 10 years after what it's called the Arab Spring uh, and what we call in Tunisia the revolution. And I was um, hoping to make a film about, uh, about young uh, women today in Tunisia about their expectation and about their dreams. So I followed the journey of uh, Gofran through this uh, very um, specific period uh, through the election campaign. And um, yeah, to see how uh, she was dealing with things, how a young woman today could be uh, involved in politics. And, um, and yeah, and also I wanted uh, that uh, her voice could be heard and uh, because um, uh, black uh, Tunisian are not very, uh, w they are somehow forgotten in the media today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the answer. Uh, Gofran has um, spent her life uh, dealing with class inequality, racism and sex discrimination. She has challenged limitations since her earliest uh, school days as we see in the film. Uh, the school teacher exiles her to the back of the classroom and slaps her, or the taxi drivers uh, refuse to stop for a black woman, or she has race, racial abuse uh, when she works as a flight attendant, etc. Too many uh, experiences like this. Why do you think such racism is experienced in contemporary Tunisia? Oh, um... Actually, uh, during the dictatorship period, for example, any kind of uh, militantism was forbidden and uh, the anti-racism fight was also somehow denied and also racism was denied. So we have uh, a lack of education, uh, a lack of uh, uh, raising awareness uh, of this issue. Uh, uh, any Tunisian uh, would deny uh, being racist and they would say uh, racism that doesn't exist in, in, in Tunisia today, but the problem is there. And we have also a history of slavery, um, not only in Tunisia, but in all the, the, the region. So, uh, and we don't know how to deal with this history. So um, the, the, the situation in Tunisia is, is a bit complex because we have um, uh, abolished the slavery since 1846. 
but uh, and do now after the revolution and thanks to uh, the anti-racist association NMT and the civil society, we have a law that criminalize uh, racism. But despite this, uh, the racism is still there because the law that is not enough. Uh, we lack education. And there is also um, somehow the fact that we interiorized the colonial, colonial attitude, thinking that the white skin, the white man is an ideal. So we have a um, complex relationship to Africa. Tunisia is rooted in Africa, but despite uh, this, uh, the relationship to Africa is is um, complex, and we have, uh, I think, an issue about who we are. So it's uh, yeah, it's a big um, issue, and we have to work uh, on this problem little by little, and especially work uh, with the with the young generation to uh, to 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 make them uh, aware of this problem. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. I think there is a strong need of confrontation uh, with the issue, as far as I understand. So um, in your film, you spent a lot of time with Goffrey, portraying her uh, a daily life in the working class neighborhood and her interaction with the local community. Can you tell us the difficulties of shooting and also editing of the film? Oh, um, I, uh, I, yeah, I spent um, a long period shooting the film. I, I shot uh, uh, during three periods of time. Um, uh, the first period, it was uh, when she uh, started uh, being involved in politics. Uh, the second part, when she was uh, in the campaign, uh, campaigning for uh, for the, the legislative uh, uh, running for a legislative campaign, and when she uh, throw herself whole in the battle, and uh, the third part when she um, uh, it was after the campaign and when she become a bit uh, when she try, she shift her interest to something else to her study, and after this uh, political experience. Uh, so uh, yeah, I um, the, I was um, shooting a lot of images, a lot of situations, but in the editing, I decided to focus on the human experience instead of showing and explaining the political uh, situation in the country. I choose to uh, to show this through her gaze, through her sensitivity and not uh, making uh, a documentary that, uh, that explain everything. But uh, uh, yeah, I choose to focus on the human uh, experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great because, you know, instead of seeing these politicals, politicians uh, speeches, I mean, it's good to see uh, the journey of a, of a person. I think uh, the trust that Gofran give you to allow you there with your camera is really amazing. And how did you establish the mutual trust with her? Oh, the trust, I, I gained her trust little by little, actually, because um, at first uh, it was, um, I, th I thought it would be easy to film her because she was uh, used to so social media, to make selfies, to film herself. But when we start filming with a big camera, with a team, it was different and a bit intimidating. So, um, but uh, when we start filming, I think she, uh, she felt and she uh, realized also that uh, uh, we are uh, filming her with, uh, with care. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, um, we are not ju judgmental. And we were, yeah, uh, following her journey, uh, and uh, that we were considerate. And uh, so she opened up to to me, to the team, and she opened her neighborhood, her family, who were very welcoming and very warm. And uh, and I uh, I could I I can 
I, I started filming uh, really her life and uh, uh, and she shared her thought, her sensitivity, her emotions with, with us. And uh, yeah, it was um, for me too, uh, uh, um, a human experience, uh, an important human experience. Uh, and uh, it was important to me to to show her struggle and to to make uh, her heard uh, um, her voice heard. Definitely, and I can imagine that it must be a really intense experience, both for you and both for her. Um, if there's anything you would like to add, please feel free to comment. Um, uh, yeah, I you no, know, I'm 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 happy that um, that uh, this uh, movie could reach uh, a larger audience and that the experience of Gofran could be um, could be uh, sh showed by by, uh, by people from different uh, uh, country because uh, as I said, it's a human experience and I think it's. Uh, uh, it's important to, to share also female experience, especially in politics where uh, uh, women have to, to fight for, uh, for themselves, for their right, and to find uh, their place and to impose uh, themselves in this field. So thank you for, for showing the film. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for uh, sharing this film with us and sharing the story of Gofran, uh, which is amazing, actually. Uh, so thank you so much, Reja. Thank you.